The next artist in our contemporary South African art section is Mohal Mursa Kane. He was born in Soweto in 1986 and now resides between Johannesburg and Cape Town. He studied, like many of the other artists, at the Michaela School of Fine Arts in the Cape. He was the winner of the Standard Bank Young Artist Award in 2016. He has exhibited in New York, London, Italy and South Africa and he represented South Africa in the Venice Biennale of 2017. His themes include race, politics, culture and memory. If we look at his first work, well not his first work, the first work I'd like to look at is titled Passage. It's a series of work and it was created in 2017. It's a video installation combined with a performance and photographic prints. In Setswana, the word passage would be translated to bocello, meaning to cross over. This is a term used to describe the experience of life. In the video projection components of this artwork, Morissa King filmed three boats from above, floating in water with their prows facing upward. In each boat lies a different figure. The first is a black woman with a hawk perched on her arm. The second is a black man with an umbrella and a trilby hat. And the third boat is occupied by a black woman in a Basutu blanket with a whip. The work deals with the history of slavery, colonialism and apartheid in terms of South African history. The figures in these boats seem to oscillate between struggle and complacency. Gradually their boats fill with water until they nearly disappear. Morissa King communicates the erasure of culture in a de democratic Africa where diabolical histories have been swept under the rug. This results in the loss of identity, which was symbolized through the sinking boats. The image of the boats was one that the world had recently been associating with the refugee crisis in Syria, as in 2017, these images were prolific. As such, these videos were very well received at the Venice Biennale, but in this case, people became aware of and sensitive to the African diaspora. On his website, the following is written about this work by Morissa King. The ebb and flow of water, as both life-giving and deadly, symbolizes the many who have arrived or departed from South Africa in trade, as cargo, or as transient bodies belonging to no particular state. In South Africa, systems of indentured labor and slavery were instituted by the Cape Colony in 1652 to meet the growing demand for labor. Dutch settlers imported people from the Indian subcontinent, Indonesia, Madagascar, East Africa and Angola, putting them to work on plantations and at ports. South Africa became a jostling ground between the Dutch and British, its native people rendered as mere commodities, moving through the establishment of an industrialized mining economy as laborers and soldiers in the Anglo-Boer and World Wars. The second work we look at is a, it's a series of, or it's an exhibition installation. Um, and all the works within this installation are untitled, but they have bracketed titles. So the exhibition itself is called Ditero. And the first work we look at is called Untitled Fence. It's made from mild steel and wood. The second one is Bust 2, so Untitled Bust 2. And then we've got Untitled Swings. The exhibition took place in Cape Town, which was appropriate as the show dealt with issues of blackness in Africa from the insurgence of colonial imperialism up until today. Cape Town, or the Mother City, is where this European rule started, and as such, it is a place where a lot of displacement has been experienced. In this exhibition, emphasis is placed on the black body in various settings. In Untitled Bus 2, and untitled swings, we see steel is used as a medium that metaphorically speaks to the duality between ornament and protection. Likewise, in Untitled Fence, Morissa King uses this material to portray the exclusivity of certain buildings and spaces that use this material to protect their imbued privilege. In Untitled Fence, we see a kraal formation using a typical Victorian fencing. This is a reference to cultural dissolve, entrapment, and marginalization. This artwork makes the viewer question whether they should place themselves within the walls of the installation or outside of them. 
Is one contained by these highly decorated steel parameters or is one excluded from the center? Untitled Bus 2 deconstructs the typical monuments of nationalism and, colo and colonialism by using his own face atop a dismembered body with ram's horns projecting from his ears. The top of his head is a large decorated icon and the wooden plinth that it stands on is incredibly tall. His eyes are closed and he appears to take on the European image of the passive and animalistic African. He is placed on a pedestal, not as a victorious war veteran observing his land from above, but rather as a trophy, like a hunted and defeated hybrid man-animal. In the photographic series, De Tuala, Maurice King again uses his own body. This subverts traditional representations of the exotic other so often seen in art history, as here he creates a self-portrait, allowing himself to be viewed. The contrast between the white dove and his silhouette holding the rifle bring to the fore notions of criminal versus innocent. This links with the societal constructs that associate whiteness with purity and blackness with evil, something that needs to not be normalized anymore. Morissa King places himself in the place of the supposed evil in a way that makes us question these stereotypes. And I can't see a more relevant time for these images to be seen than right now with the Black Lives Matter movement on the rise. I think these works speak quite poetically towards what a large majority of black citizens are feeling in our country.